Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to pre-industrial surgeries by Sam Ronella. It's been quite a long time since I've reacted to one of his videos and yeah, I thought it'd be good to bring him back. So yeah, we're going to react to this one now. I'm going into this thinking it's about plastic surgery before it was a thing or like, not plastic surgery, like ugh, just surgeries, brain surgeries or skull surgeries or whatever heart surgeries before it was a thing like medically and they i guess attempted them i don't know that might just be the title though just sort of baiting me in but yeah i enjoy his videos a lot so i'm going to react to this links are in the description to my patreon i've just reacted to a video today that i was going to post to youtube but sadly it got blocked and also a lot of series movies um film film was the same as movies um music reactions will stop being posted there and based off suggestions what people want and stuff that i can't post to youtube it will go onto the patreon and yeah, I've got a cool little community there as well if you want to see that. But yeah, links are in the description for those interested. If not, we'll just jump into this reaction right now. It's been ages since I've watched these videos. Hey kids, had a bad day? Well, could be worse. You could be living in a world without modern anesthetic. Today, we'll be talking about some surgical procedures. Wait, they used to use alcohol, didn't they? To just like, send you away. I don't know, send you into another world. Imagine that. Oh, he just man. carried out long before the development of medicine as we know it today. Now, once you go back a certain distance, the line between operation and mutilation is pretty thin. So, for our purposes, <laughs> surgery refers to any bodily manipulation carried out with the intent of fixing some injury or illness. And oh, away no. we go. The very first surgery that we have historical evidence for dates as far back as 6500 BC. It's called trepanning, which is a nice word for carving someone's frickin' skull open using nothing but a rock. Maybe a rock on a stick if you were lucky. Huh? In all seriousness though, you can see that a good deal of care went into the procedure. Flipping hell, are they just carving patterns into their skulls? Which lets us know that this isn't just the result of random injury. Many skulls even showed signs of healing around the holes, meaning plenty of the people who underwent this whole thing just got up and went about their day afterwards. <laughs> Alright, hold on. <laughs> what the fuck? And you say, this all sounds batch, uh, guano insane. No way this was that common of an occurrence. Well, friend, if you've been watching this channel long enough, you should know that if you give human beings the benefit of the doubt, chances are they'll prove you wrong. In fact, so far, over 1,500 trepanned skulls have been dug up all across the globe, from wow. Europe to China and even the Americas. This means that between 5 and 10% of all skulls that we've found from the Neolithic period have had at least one man-made hole scraped into them. To put it this way, based on that data, there's a greater probability of someone born in the late Stone Age having their brain matter exposed by some shaman with a chunk of flint than someone born in the USA being a redhead. To this day, <laughs> nobody really knows why this was such a common practice, but most what? theories tend to revolve around the idea of releasing some kind of dark supernatural force from the patient. Man, and I'm getting real sick of all these evil entities infecting our minds and bodies. Huh, you can say that again. I tell you, I need these demons like I need a hole in the head. No way. Fast forward to 600 BC. <laughs> Over in India, there lived a guy called Maharshi Susruta. Now, this guy was a medical mastermind. He wrote a treatise known as Susruta Samhita, which described countless different conditions, treatments, and yes, even surgeries. One of which is the first recorded instance of rhinoplasty. That means nose job. A hornbill's a type of- Wait, this man was doing nose jobs? Thousands of years ago. Bird. I'm here too. Anyway, here's how it's done according to Susruta. First, you get them plastered, obviously. Second, you use a leaf to measure out the part of the nose you want fixed. Then, you use the leaf to cut off a flap of skin from the cheek or forehead of the patient. What? This part's important though. You gotta remember to leave a little piece of it still attached. Otherwise, you just got a chunk of dirty dead face meat on your hands. Now, wherever you're looking to stick the new flesh on, you rub that part raw with a knife. Also, you're gonna want to stick two- Oh. This is seriously how it was back in these days. Plant stalks in their nostrils so their nose keeps its proper shape. Slap the skin on, suture it, dust it with licorice powder for some reason, and cover it with cotton. Sesame oil should be regularly applied until the skin is fully healed. If you're like me, you already do that by default so it shouldn't be an issue. Finally, at long last, your sniffer is reborn. Don't worry, you still look like a freak. 
just slightly less so. Moving on, our next surgery <laughs> took place in 10th century Spain on Sancho the First of Leon, otherwise known as Sancho the Fat. Now, normally back in the day, having some meat on your bones was a sign of wealth and power and all that, but this guy was like TLC documentary tier, to the point where he could hardly function as a human being. So his <laughs> constituents said, greetings, your thickness. Uh, yeah, you can't be king anymore on account of you keep breaking every horse we give you, and nobody wants to wash between your accordion like neck folds no more. After his adipose got him deposed, Sancho decided to seek medical help for his condition under the oversight of well reputed physician Hazdai Ibn Shaparut, which is an anagram for ha paintbrush aids. Now, if there's one thing that medieval man understood, it's practicality lap band, gastric bypass, belly balloon. Nowadays, yeah, but how are they going to do this back in these days? These all exist to help people who don't have the self-control to stop eating so much on their own. But Dr. Shapadu didn't believe in beating around the bush. He said, well, why don't we just stop the patient from shoving food into his own greasy maw in the first place, and decided to just up and stitch the dude's lips together. After the operation, the only nutrients that Sancho received came through a straw, in the form of a mixture known as thoriaca, which was a complex blend of several herbs, fruits, and seeds, including opium. It was basically basically the closest thing you could find to lean at the time, and lean he became, losing around half his weight before ascending to the throne once more. So this is the part of the video where what? I pander to the, the desires of the audience. If there's one thing I know you internet people can't get enough of, it's things going inside people's eyeballs. Let's talk about cataract okay. surgery. The art of dealing with people's clouded lenses has been around for millennia, believe it or not. That Susruta guy from earlier actually talked about the most common procedure for cataracts for most of civilized history, which is known as the couching method. Couching is done by taking a sharp object, like a needle or a thorn, and ever so gently stabbing their eye eye hole at weird angles until the lens moves out of the way. No lasers, no sedatives, no paralytics, just a rusty old pin and some elbow grease the way God intended. <laughs> the majority of the Jeez. time, this operation didn't work, usually just damaging the already blind eye irreparably. Shocker, right? And even if it did go as planned, you still, you know, didn't have a lens in your eye. So you essentially went from, I can't tell if I'm dead or not, to, ah yes, it is quite yellow out today. By God, <laughs> something moved somewhere. A slightly more refined version of this operation is the suction method, which dates back to at least the 10th century AD, if not older. This procedure is described as requiring, quote, a large incision in the eye, a hollow needle, and an assistant with an extraordinary lung capacity. Though this reads like the setup to the world's most horrifying party trick, <laughs> boy with good suck. It's actually the bare minimum number of tools needed to completely extract the lens from the eye. In case you didn't pick up on how, here's a diagram. This method generally saw a greater success rate and fewer complications than its non-extracting counterpart. Oh, so hopefully my. you can sleep well tonight knowing that the number of human beings who have sucked a piece of somebody's living eyeball through a straw is above zero. Anywho, let's all just be thankful that we live in an era where procedures like these are a thing of the past. Now remember yeah. kids, even though the surgeries I described here do sound pretty easy to pull off, please don't try them at home. But if you do, please put it on live leak afterwards. We know what you can do. It. <laughs> that site shut Go down, home. didn't it? Learn stuff about things. And he's got his money at the end. Fair enough, man. Get in the bag. Um, yeah, this is crazy. Like every ancient culture has three things in common. Sword, bread, and hole in head. <laughs> Sam's animation is getting a bit. I don't know whether to be proud or scared. Me greeting my cat like, greetings your thickness. Stitches were developed in India and in the beginning... Decapitated heads of ants were used as ants are known to hold on to whatever they're biting. Even after they've been decap decapitated. What the hell? So wait, they were used on ants to start with. What the fuck? But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this reaction. If you want some more Sam Onella, let me know in the comments. And yeah, until next time, like, subscribe and peace.